Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Paul. And we're going to challenge you to transform your financial future through the principles of the most profitable business in the world, banking. We believe everyone should be involved in two businesses, the business that you're in and the banking business. Everyday people can replicate what bankers have been doing for centuries to leverage capital and build wealth through private lending. Join us as we uncover the truths about money, expose lies and myths, and flip conventional financial advice on its head. Here we go. All right, Paul, how you doing this December day, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. This is the, the last episode of 2023. What a an epic year. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a good year. I was just thinking to myself, I wish we had been recording the whole time we were just chatting because there was some funny stuff in there. <laughs> maybe it's good that we weren't. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> just because it's funny doesn't mean it's it's good public information. Uh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, last episode of 2023, man, we uh, had a good year. So again, another year of meeting every single week, talking, catching up, not that we wouldn't anyway, but it's nice to have this kind of forced time together. Um, but yeah, dude, so a highlight, I was just looking at our stats, the podcast stats, and we're like 200 episodes away from 60,000 downloads at the time of this recording. So by the time this goes out, we'll have surpassed 60,000 downloads. Yeah, not so, bad for a couple of, not bad for a couple of amateurs. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Man, I don't know what the, the I'm sure that puts us up there in, you know, top 10%, maybe 5% of podcasts worldwide, which is eight, not eight too high. podcasts that are out there. Yeah, it's not too, too difficult to crack the top 10 as long as you, you're, you know, maybe do 10 episodes at least or something, I don't know. Yeah, it would be interesting to know how many, you know, obviously the the well-known ones that have been out there for years uh, on various topics, but, you know, how many do make, how many make 50 or 100 episodes? Uh, I, have no, I have no idea. I used to follow some, listen to some, and then all of a sudden they stop. Just cold yeah. turkey. Gone. Yep. In fact, one of my favorites is with uh, Jay Abraham, or is it Jay Abraham or Jay Abram? Jay Abraham, right? Um, Jay Abraham, the ultimate entrepreneur. He's, you know, one of the world's premier like business coaches or um, entrepreneur coaches. And it's just really good information. But it, it like popped up to the top of my podcast list. I was like, oh, he actually put another episode out. Um, so he do, did one with Stephen Covey that I was listening to. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's the author of um, the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And Yep, exactly. Right. Look at that recall. Yeah, look at that. So that classic. Unscripted. That's a classic. Yeah, so. that's a good one. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. But um, yeah, man, I probably learn more from podcasts than anything else these days. Right? Podcasts and books. Um, yeah, I'd tell more you. More than the, I ever learned in school. When you look at, yeah, and you went to a good college. I went to a good college, right? But you, but you look at what's going on at our elite universities in the United States today. I mean, they're not, and I know we're only seeing what the news is showing because we're right. only seeing the people that are the crazies that are out there, you mm -hmm. know, protesting what they're protesting, right? A bunch of lunatics. Uh, but these are people that, you know, spend 70 to a hundred thousand dollars a year to attend an elite university. And let's face it, these people are morons. Yeah. The, the people that, that they show in the news anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, so now if you didn't know how I feel now, you know how I feel <laughs> just cause you're just cause you can, you know, score well on a test. Uh, could you, yeah. and you, you get good grades. Doesn't mean you're intelligent. Oh, you check there's certain blocks maybe as well. Yeah, right. There's, there's that. I mean, there's openly, there's that. Right. And that's, that's not fair either to, to anybody, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, right. now they're just expensive colleges. They're not really elite. They're just high priced. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I prefer the, the free online university of podcasts, YouTube, audible books, um, Man, how else are you going to learn if you're a, a busy parent? You know, you got kids, you're shuttling from one sport to the next. Right. How else do you do you have time to do anything if, if if you can't just put in some some AirPods and listen? That's right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, thanks, everybody, for sticking with us for another year. Um, we're not stopping. So 2024 will be even better. Uh, and I think we're going to expand by, like we said, probably mentioned bringing in some some outside guests 
on perhaps even different topics than finances. Some, you know, uh, different issues that maybe we want to create awareness around or, or just take a break and, and make it a little more entertaining. Yeah. I'm going to try to go meet with that person we talked about the other day uh, after the new year. My buddy is a uh, college classmate is hosting her down in uh, another part of Virginia. And I'm going to oh, cool. go see if I can go down there and invite her on as well, because that's an important issue as well. Uh, but yeah, great feedback from that episode that we did with Paul. Uh, another person told me today that they, they really appreciated that we, that we did that and brought some, you know, change, change the pace a little bit and, yeah, you know, brought some focus to a very important issue that's out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've heard people saying, Hey, I'm definitely going to you know, give some of my uh, end of year giving to this organization because um, they're, they're doing, it's a pretty awesome mission. So go yes. back, listen to episode 95. If, if you're unsure of what we're talking about, um, check that out. But well, all right. So we just went through the list for 2023 and kind of rank ordered the, the number of downloads for every episode. And we came across the top five episodes from 2023. So we want to do just a, a review of those and kind of make it a back to the basics episode, which I think happens. Those always seem to be pretty popular. Just getting back to the basics. Let's dumb it down. I don't like to say dumb it down. Let's simplify it. Um, right. Because, you know, you don't have to dumb it down. You just got to make it easier to uh, absorb. But um, and really, when we looked at them, we realized, wow, well, three of these, we were discussing the problem. And we always discuss the solution, too, which in our world is infinite banking. But uh, three of these focus heavily on the problem, and two of them focus heavily on the solution. So let's just go back to the basics on the problem and the solution. So uh, the problem episodes, and these are these are not in chronological order. They're in the order of the number of downloads. So the most popular, um, the, the three most popular dealing with the problem were episodes 52, 60, and 49. We'll link those in the show notes. Um, so, you know, 52 dealt with fractional reserve banking. Hmm. So what are the basics of fractional reserve banking, Paul? Well, they're not good. <laughs> they're not good yeah yeah, yeah so sure. actually if you look at my shelf folks up there there's this book called end the fed by ron paul you could read the creature from jekyll island mm -hmm. or you could listen to our episode which is probably like 35 minutes or something uh but fractional reserve banking so we don't have we don't have uh like a hard gold standard currency anymore we we used to in this country uh, prior to the Federal Reserve, and even after, in the in the wake of the creation of the of that creature, we had sound what they call sound money, uh, which is you know paper money. Let's say that's backed up by an equal value of gold. So if you're really old, you might have a couple of silver certificates laying around where you used to be able to you know to go exchange the silver certificate for you know a portion of silver or whatever. Um, which some people may may refer to as God's money, right? Right. It's, it's gold and it's silver, which has intrinsic value. Correct. Uh, and extrinsic value, right? It's valuable in and of itself, but like, especially silver, so many things are made with that material. Yep. That it, it no doubt stereo equipment stuff, speaker, I mean, just all, right. kind, all so kinds of So it has of intrinsic stuff. value, it can be used to create wealth in other areas. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the, 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 the short of it is uh, fractional reserve banking. You put a thousand bucks in the bank. A bank, which I think currently in the United States has no reserve requirement, meaning they can take all of that money that you just deposited and they can lend it to Dave. Yeah. Without restriction. And then Dave goes, puts that money that he borrowed and he go put, he puts it in his bank because they're different banks, let's say. And now that bank can take, you know, nine, you know, 90% or let's, well, let's just say the reserve requirement was 10%. Yeah, so he, they, it, they could take $900 and lend that out to, you know, Joe Schmo down the street, who then takes that money, puts it in his bank, and they can lend out 90% of that, and so on and so forth. So that one deposit that I made has created new, what they call new money. Think about mm -hmm. that. It's like the money is created out of nothing. Yeah, That is inflation, and that is why the value of the dollar has gone down exponentially over the past 100 year plus years since the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. So basically it makes you poorer every year. 
Right. It reduces your purchasing power every year. So you That's could right. have more money. I mean, I I make you look at, you know, the the best year my dad ever had when I was a kid. You know, I probably make five times what his best year ever was. And I'm not living a lifestyle of five X of what I lived as a kid. That's for sure. Right. Right. That's Uh, right. Because that's five times as much money doesn't buy five times as much stuff as it did back then. So correct. I remember thinking as a, even as a child, because my mom would talk about, she's like, when I was a kid, a loaf of bread was a nickel. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> or 25 cents or whatever it was. I, I don't want to say she, she said a nickel. And that it's probably right because at the time I could get a, a loaf of Italian bread at Market Basket. I have to say Market Basket or yeah. Demoulas for a dollar. Fresh baked Italian bread loaf sliced for a buck. And it was delicious, right? You can't get that in the South, folks, either. You guys don't know how to make good bread down here. Um, anyway, I don't know, it's the water. But, but anyway, uh, yeah. So I always wondered, I was like, well, why does it get more expensive? That, is, that doesn't make any sense. And I, I just remember thinking about this as a young kid. Like, and I just, why, why is that? And there was yep. no good answer, of course, but yeah. now we know. What, what I think is fun is I'm reading, uh, what's the Murray Rothbard book over there? I'm going through it again. Which uh, one? <laughs> the one about the Fed, the Federal Reserve. Um, oh. Uh, oh gosh, he's great though. It's right over there, but it's covered up by other books, so I can't see. <laughs> um, but um, he says he makes the point: any amount of money is is the correct amount of money around the world. Yes, like, like any that's amount of money. If if there was only one billion dollars to go around, that would be just fine. So the mystery of, mystery of banking. No. Or the, no, the case against the Fed by the Mario case Rothbard. against the Fed. Yeah, yeah. I've got that on my, uh, yeah, I've got that on my Kindle or whatever. Yeah. So any amount of money is the right amount of money. Correct. It just means that you would have to spend far less of it to get the exact same thing because it would that's, have a lot more value, right? That's that's right. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. People don't understand that, and that that was a sh- when I first read that years ago, it was like really revealing. Like, oh wow, you're yes. right, because everything is just uh, repriced depending on the current uh, volume of capital out there available. Yes. And if you remember on one of the episodes, we talked about, you know, Jack out in the woods with his friends or the boys out there and yeah, collecting buying walnuts. and selling, collecting walnuts, building tree houses and tree forts, and then realizing when they sold them for 10 walnuts one day, you know, realizing there was an abundance of walnuts, an endless supply of walnuts falling from the, from the sky right. uh that they could that the price of each tree fort went up exponentially in a short amount of time so yeah. that was a great i thought just a great way to explain and, th- and then to, what happened those walnuts became so worthless that they stopped building tree forts all together yeah, that's right. like, and they I just abandoned the woods and went back to playing <laughs> video games <laughs> that's right like that's that's right <laughs> yeah so listen to that episode that's a great episode on uh the fractional reserve banking the federal reserve system inflation all that episode 52. um so another popular episode talking about the problem was episode 60 objections to whole life insurance so oh boy we we labeled um invalid so it was seven in parentheses invalid whole life objections so uh you know here here's one and i think you have a story about this um Hmm. Well, which one would this fit into? I have enough assets that I can self-insure or, um, yeah, I only, well, my partner will be fine if they, fine, they make plenty of money. Um, yeah. What if they all, don't? These are all <laughs> ignorant objections, but yeah, what if they don't? And what if, you know, oh, by term, invest the difference. You've got, you've got a story that could kind of explain why, why yeah. we call these invalid objections. Yeah, so I had a a recent conversation with somebody um, who I've known a long time, and you know, reconnected after many years. And and he's he's a listener, and I I know he'll hear this. But this story I think needs to be told. Uh, You know, someone who and we all know these people, right? And maybe we were we were once these people because on the surface, what Dave Ramsey says, for example, is yeah, pretty good advice. You know, live within your means. Uh, I don't, you know, the pay cash for everything, whatever. A lot of people live like that and they live just fine. 
uh, you know, buy term and invest the difference is the, is the biggest thing, which he didn't invent. He took that from uh, A.L. Williams, maybe? Does yeah. that sound right? Maybe? Sounds right. Anyway, I think that's right. If I'm wrong, sorry. Uh, but anyway, so followed, you know, last 20 plus years has followed this advice, probably closer to 30 years, has followed this advice to the letter, right? Got out of debt, start paying cash, get the envelope method, doing all the things, you know, and maxing out your 401k and doing this and doing that, whatever. Bought term. Well, uh, you know, on, on, you know, housewife, right? It hasn't, hasn't worked since they've had, you know, children. They had four, had four kids. Um, so, all right. So how do I take care of the spouse, you know, post, post military life? There's a few options, right? There's a survivor benefit plan. There's uh, veterans group life insurance, which is annually renewing term, which gets extremely expensive when you're right. 54 years old, obviously, in 64 years old or 74 years old. It's yep. almost, no one's writing that check, right? right. You've heard to say that for a half a million dollars of death benefit. So it becomes interested, gets referred by another friend of ours, says, hey, you should, you ought to talk to Paul. He's been doing this thing called the infinite banking concept for the last several years, uses whole life insurance, whatever. Contact Paul, read this book, does that, realizes, oh boy, maybe I, maybe I made a mistake. And a few years ago, got, got ill, uh, you know, a very serious illness that uh, thankfully he defeated. But now, you know, we find ourselves uninsurable when we want to buy a product, a permanent life insurance product. Now we cannot because we followed the wrong advice, the wrong advice, which when you watch the YouTube channel, it's never, this is never the case. Everything is always just perfect. It's always going to be hunky dory. Screw the next generation. Oh, you you'll have enough money in your investments where the, the, the non-working spouse will be fine or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is just one example. I'm just one person, but how many people have we known where that have gotten ill in their adult life, young adult life, they've gotten cancer, they've gotten whatever that they found themselves uninsurable and, I'll say this, and I think the lesson learned is this, Dave. Even if infinite, the infinite banking concept is, you don't think it's worth exploring and you don't want to buy whole life insurance, but please go out there, reach out to us, get convertible term life insurance. Right. Convertible term, as a reminder, is, is you still go through full underwriting, blood work, urine, EKG, depending on your age and the amount of death benefit that you're trying to buy. You get fully underwritten, and then God forbid, if you find yourself ill before a certain age and you still want to buy whole life insurance, you can. Yep. And now you, you have less to worry about. So, again, nothing wrong with term insurance. We both own convertible term. We sell convertible term. But there's a purpose. It's The intent is to convert it at some point. Um, but, if, again, so anyway, that's, that's a story. This stuff does happen. It is real. Um, and shame on these, these, these hucksters, these, these entertainers on they're, they're giving too many people the wrong advice. Right. Cause there, there's countless stories like that where somebody running out of term insurance. Oh, well let's, let's get more. Oh, I'm uninsurable, but I still have, I still have a family to take care of. And I haven't built up that nest egg like I thought I would, or I haven't built up three or $4 million in a nest egg that will actually cover my family's cost of living that, you know, that the, the lifestyle we have today, if something happens to me. Um, and you know, you can't, you can't sue Dave Ramsey for giving you that advice. Cause he's not a professional. That's he's right. He's given garbage advice. Uh, and he can do so cause he's not a professional. He's not held to any standard whatsoever. Um, but you know, if, if, if that was me up here, a licensed insurance guy saying, don't buy whole life. You never need it. It's stupid. Just by term. And then uh, all of a sudden you need it whole life. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could come after me. Yeah. Oh, but. and put the difference in some mystery mutual fund that's going to average 12% compounding year after year. Guess what, folks? It doesn't exist. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> it just it literally is fantasy. <laughs> yeah. So listen to episode 60, Objections to Whole Life, that, that the term insurance, the convertible term episode is 18. So you can check that one out. That's a good one. Um, that was from actually 2022. That was like a year and a half ago. 
Yeah, I, I, I think it's a no brainer, Dave, right? There's no logical reason that people shouldn't own as much convertible term insurance as as their human life equal to yeah. their human life value. And think about this. So here's another uh, reason for that is I was talking to somebody recently, a prospect, not a client, but he said he's got a daughter and she's going to need, she's special needs. She's going to need care for the rest of her life. Yeah. So you think this guy wants term insurance? So that when he dies at, at age 80 and his daughter is, say, uh, you know, 50 and still has maybe 30 years ahead of her, there's no, she's not there's getting nothing. anything. There's nothing. Yeah, now she, right. right. Now and, she. And who does she belong to? You know, the state is going to have to take care of her or another family member who maybe doesn't even have the means to do so. So yep. this guy is all about, I want this permanent death benefit, man, because yep. one day I'm going to die. And when I do, my daughter is still going to need care for the rest of her life. I want her to be comfortable. I don't want to put anybody out. I want her to have the best life she can possibly have. So I'm doing this for her. You know, if. Yep. This, this one hits close to home for me. Um, you know, we have a, a, we have a niece that, you know, that that's, that's the case. You know, she'll need to live with, with mom and dad. Uh, and then eventually her, her uh, older sister, you know, and they're only like 11 months apart. So it's, um, yeah. That's the reality. And, you know, we're in the process as a family of, you know, establishing the, you know, thinking down the road 40 years from now, what does that, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, it is real. And well, we, and we're going to have grandchildren. We have no idea if they're going to be healthy or not. Odds are they will be, but maybe one of them won't be. Well, and you that, don't know, have any idea if your kids are going to be healthy 30 years from now. Right. You know, I mean, there's not to try to fear monger or scare, but that's a no, real possibility that one of your kids uh, becomes disabled and needs care for the rest of their life. Medical care. Yep. Um, oh, I didn't have any insurance in place. Now I've either got to penny pinch my way through my passive income years and make sure I leave some of my 401k to them so that they have something. Um, or, you know, I get whole life insurance and it's going to be there and they're going to be just fine. Yeah. And we're talking purely about really the death benefit, you know, the yeah, after we're right. gone benefit. But, you know, folks, this, you know, the infinite banking concept, we use these specially designed whole life insurance contracts that we get to enjoy the living benefits as well. So, yeah, I'm putting a ton of cash via premium into these policies and I have access to that capital. Eventually, I'm going to have access to many times over what I've paid in premium. Uh, so it's not a it's, there's no compromise. The only compromise is, is really not is not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Is, is, uh, and it's it's a decision made out of ignorance, which yeah. is unfortunate. So it kind of leads us into uh, you know that another problem episode we focused on pro uh, episode forty nine when we talked about the wealth pyramid and should you fund your four hundred one k. The wealth pyramid, in short, is you take it you know look at it like a normal pyramid on the bottom. You really want to build your foundation with tier one capital, capital that you have the most control over and the least risk. So you yeah, minimize risk, maximize control, start there and then work your way up to the very top. And that's like the stock market where you have no control and maximum risk. Right. Right. But what happens? Traditional financial advice out there. They turn they it upside flip, down. They turn it upside down and they say your foundation, even before you save money, you need to invest in the market somewhere where you have no control and maximum risk. Right. Right. And they do it opposite. And then, yeah, if you have any money left over down the road, you can put it in uh, whole life insurance. Sure. Save it. Why not? Right. Like, so that came uh, from a, a book that, that describes that really great description so that episode is episode 49 give that a listen and um you know we give we that's give patrick our... donahoe's book right heads yeah. i win tails you lose right yeah right. so some pretty good principles in there uh to pay attention to that's somewhere um, over there yeah so read the book but then come back and work with us um not uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah not to send yeah, you to somebody I mean, else but no. uh, obviously <laughs> obviously <laughs> Um, you're, but you're isn't that amazing? Not gonna, you're not going to talk to Patrick if you call his company. Uh, so, right, yeah. Um, but isn't that amazing? You know, uh, you know, just a little bit of thought. Why would these people want to flip that that stable shape upside down? So the pointy end 
is on the ground. But it doesn't make any sense. It's, and it it's doesn't be, make any it, it's they're because making, we've they're been getting paid. Yeah, we we've, we've been <laughs> trained to look at what's the most important thing when we use, put our money to work, it's rate of return. That's what right. we've been trained. You know, so that's the that's only right. thing we focus on, you know, when really the first thing we should be focusing on is what's my return of capital? Yeah. Like, am I going to get my money back? Right. You know, and I was thinking about our families uh, with, you know, things that we've put in place um, through the infinite banking concept and, and, and believing in practicing and, and paying adequate premium relative, relative to our income is that our kids, when they're our age, will have completely different discussions uh, about what, what investing actually is. Um, and, and, and what it isn't mm -hmm. and the need to, I was talking to a client today, you know, very high income. They don't really need to do anything else. They could pay high premium relative to their income, which would be a quarter million plus yeah. per year over the next 15 to 20 years and be just fine. Yeah. And I think That's I true. talked them off a bad, probably a bad, a bad private venture because of that statement so yeah good anyway yeah yeah they'll they'll thank you for it if they haven't already yeah yeah no doubt so there there you go there's just a little uh back to the basics on the problem now you know a couple episodes we did that focus mainly on the solution episodes 63 and 55 two of our top five episodes from 2023 episode 63 talks about creating your own banking system we talked about the family banking system um and you know between you and me, Paul, I don't know how many policies we have total, but I've got multiple policies on myself. I got one on my wife, probably need to get into a second one. And I've got policies on every, all seven kids. So yeah. You know, why in the world? We have you... nine. You have nine. So yeah. Plus we're... two convertible terms. So 11. Okay. Yeah. So I'm right. Yeah. You know, we're about the same, you know, we're right at, yeah. we've got more than 20 between the two of us. So yeah. Um, whole lot of death benefit and a whole lot of cash yep. value. Yeah. Right. So we have access to capital. Uh, our kids have access to capital if we feel so inclined to provide them a loan or give them a leg up and starting starting their business, um, helping them out with college, uh, helping them buy their first car. Because uh, I don't know how many kids could save up fifteen thousand dollars by the time they're sixteen. Pretty tough to do, and that's about yeah. the cost of a a decent used car. Um. From what right. I found, so yeah, you got a good one though. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, he, he keeps wanting to, he wants to sell it and get you know something cool like a, a Dodge Charger, which I rented. I was out of town this week, and I got a. What you have a you have a health. He wants my he wants my car. Let's yeah. not let's not kid around. <laughs> so I got I rented. I was able to rent a Dodge Charger for for two days. Fifty. Yeah, that's a V six though, right? It's it was like, terrible. It was a V six. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and I was John and I were driving in it, yeah. right? And uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, this is a V6. You can just yeah. feel it. You can hear it, right?" But it has it has like four hundred and change less horsepower than my car. <laughs> yeah, but it's all wheel drive, so it's safe. Yeah, sure. Uh, great for I yeah. was in Colorado. Great for Minnesota, uh, yep. and it looks like a cop. The cops drive Dodge Chargers right. a lot. They do. So people slow down when they see you coming if it's a black Dodge Charger. Yeah, uh, mine was bright blue. So, uh, B5 not the blue. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, nice um, color though. yeah. So anyway, he wants, you know, so I'm teaching him, um, at, well, and this goes into episode 63, creating your family banking system. Um, I got a text while I was out of town from, from my old, from Jack. And he said, Hey, when you get home, can you talk to me about investing my money? Cause he's got like, he's got some money saved up, you yeah. know, he's, he's well capitalized for a 16 year old and yep. he wants to start putting some of that to work. So I said, absolutely. Let's talk. So yeah, that's going to be a him. fun conversation. Yeah. Good for him. No, it's good. I think that, um, you know, it's part of that discussion about wanting a cooler car and I mean, who doesn't, right? Yeah. Like everyone wants a cooler car. Um, I, I saw Audi R8 on my way into the neighborhood today and it's the one that I've been sending pictures to chat of. I was like, oh, there oh yeah. it is. Like it's all over the place. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. He's delivering, uh, delivering food in it because I see it everywhere. And it's, it's really nice. Got it's because you're looking place. for it. Like an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> it's got Montana plates and uh, there oh, I am. So we know what he did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, he's part of that. He's, he's one of them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> which yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. But too. anyway, yeah. Um, of 
you know, this fear of missing out, this FOMO, whether it's about investing or this opportunity or that of, hey, and I've been telling my kids this too, instead of like, you get money in your pocket and Anthony is very adamant about saving his 20% because that's what I told him. Like you have to save 20% of what we give you for an allowance, everything else you can spend. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, but this this idea like, hey, you ought to be thinking four or five years from now when you're 16 and you want to buy a car maybe. Yeah. Or lease it from me or whatever. Like the more money you have, the better that thing is going to be. But if you're spending it on Roblox and those other crap, I don't even know what that what that is. <laughs> you're yeah. just you're not going to have much. It's so amazing anyway. how motivated they can get with saving their money if they got something in mind. Yeah, think but long range. Kids. It's hard to think long range when you're when you're twelve. It is. What is he? Thirteen. You know, three He's years 11, is a yeah, 11, long yeah. ways away. It is. It's a, it's an eternity. Yeah, I mean, I had that. Con Jack wanted a new phone, right? And we went to the to the store. To well, he talked to a, the wrong guy. <laughs> to, to, to get it, yeah. Dave, has an, I, Dave has an iPhone SE. <laughs> I, no, I just upgraded. Did you get a new one? <laughs> I, got, I had to upgrade to the 14 because that thing was dying. Like I had to charge it <laughs> seven times a day. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, I got a 14. I shelled out the big bucks. and uh, But Jack wanted a new phone. So we go there and look at the iPhone 15. And at first he's like, I want the, what what is it? The Pro, 15 Pro. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, what's the difference between that? And the fifty, the regular, the metal it's made out of, and, and right. well, the guy was like, "Oh, it's got like a third camera lens." So I turned to Jack. I was like, "So you want to pay like two hundred bucks for a third camera lens? You don't need it. That's the only difference." And he's like, "Okay." Yeah. And then we looked, and you know, he still owed some money on his current phone, and he's like, "Well, the guy was said, well, if you keep it for two more months, you won't have any money, and you won't have to pay on that right. phone to turn it in." And I said, "He's," I said, "What do you want to do?" your money he said well, i want the new phone i said okay but i'm just letting you know that's how broke people stay broke they trade in phones that haven't been paid off yet and well, the, the dude like working there looked up and he's like he's right your dad's right so but no he made his he made his choice but those are the things yep. i want to point out like you you could wait two more months and not have to pay a hundred bucks extra yeah I'm going to have to bust his chops next time I see him. Yeah, I even told him, how many hours of work is that? Get your calculator out. That's like eight hours of work. Yeah, after taxes. Yeah, so you're going to spend eight hours just to pay the uh, the extra that you owe on this, Yeah, that you don't need to, right? Totally, totally worth it. <laughs> yeah, so um, I hate diamond him out, but you know, years later from now, he can look back and listen to this episode and realize, wow, I've come a long way in my thinking about money. You tie in that investment discussion and say, hey, this is what that money that you no longer have would have been compounded at 8% Ooh. over the next 40 years. Oh, there you go. Yeah, opportunity cost. That's right. It's a real thing. All right, episode 55 um, was the final one. So the, the, it was actually one of, yeah, one of the top five, sequencing your capital and repaying loans. I think when, if you want to get back to the basics of what IBC is all about, it's about sequencing your capital. Before yep. you before you let it leave your hands, just run it through a policy first. Capture it there forever. Let it earn uninterrupted compound growth for the rest of your days. And then loan against it to go do what you're going to do anyway with it. Yeah. So I recently had a referred referred pr prospective client. I think future client probably. But, you know, you're just a – you're not anything until you're a client, right? Um. It's all conversation. It's all right. fantasy until we until we pay a premium. But a guy that you know decided, you know, I'm not quite ready. I'd like to pay off some debts first. And I, you know, I was like, okay, I, you know, I understand. I was like, yeah, um, if you'd like me to take a look, there's there's a better way to do that by just changing the sequence of your money. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you didn't get a response because probably like, what is what is he talking about? Um, and I normally. And, you know, I, I enjoy those types of cases, but they're not my bread and butter where I just want to, you know, go through pages and pages of debt financials and figure out, you know, the debt snowball strategy with IBC. But it's not that difficult either. It's also quite easy. Yeah. Um, but if people don't know, like, just like doctors with their student loans or anyone with student loans, instead of paying extra on those student loans, you ought to be capitalizing a policy. 
yeah. building capital and building wealth while repaying debt at the same time. And also known as prioritizing your money over the banks. Yep. Because at the end of the debt, you could either have no debt and no money or no debt and still have your original capital working for you. Yeah, it really is quite powerful in that it goes for any debt you have. I don't care if it's mortgage debt, car debt, credit card debt, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, prioritize your own capital accumulation over the third party. Absolutely. Because if you if, if you don't, when will you? If you don't do it now, when you have some <laughs> debt, when will yeah. you ever cap prioritize your own capital? Yeah. So I probably need to have the convertible term discussion with that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Because maybe he's just not there mentally, not ready. Um, it, you know, that's fine. It's a sure. journey, right? It, you can't you can't flip the switch in one day. Uh, most people. So, um, right. Yeah. Only a few of us elite. I was not one of the elite. You were. <laughs> it took elite. me like six months to figure elite it out. Elite thinkers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, once you once you see behind the curtain, like uh, like one of our good clients says, you, you you won't be able to to unsee it. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. uh, wish the light bulb could go off for everybody as quickly as possible. It's so obvious to us that you know paying high premium relative to our income is the is the best thing to do with our capital. It's the it's the best phase one of our capital. The best first right? thing to do. First yep. thing to do. Yep. Right. Yeah. Well, right on. So yeah, that was good. Just a little recap of 2023 it's been a great year um in in many ways personally and professionally I hope it's been great for everybody else and i know this is probably dropping on christmas day 2023 so nobody's going to listen to it until the next day um so hope you all had a good christmas a uh, good holiday and uh, looking forward to the new year and paul's about to to set sail for the motherland it's right for the first time ever going to eat some i can't wait i'm you know i'm a big foodie mm -hmm. uh i can't wait to eat the food <laughs> yeah yeah well hit the scale on your way out and then hit it on the way back in let's see what the the delta is yeah i probably hover around a buck 65 or so so there you go fighting fighting weight yeah yeah pretty good it's right where i need to be i think good all right well then uh you know let it go let yourself go for the next Just couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Well, have a good uh, trip. Have a great Christmas. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Yeah, y'all too. And uh, to everybody, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And uh, we'll see you on the, uh, see you on, the other, on the other side of the new year. Catch you on the flip side. And until then, control your capital. Or somebody else will. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. If you'd like to have a conversation with us to see how you can become your own banker, or if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to tackle on a future episode, please send us an email to David and Paul at the ibcguys.com. And subscribe and leave us a review if you're on Apple. Follow and leave us a five-star review if you're on Spotify. And please share this with your friends. We'll see you next week.